Welcome back, Lyric here, and I am an autistic adult. However, I didn't find out I was autistic until I was 29 years old, ever since I found out I was autistic when I was 29 years old. In a very stereotypically autistic fashion, I have been completely obsessed with the topic of autism, neurodiversity, ADHD, and my neurodivergent brain, and trying to make sense of something that was very confusing to me for most of my life. When talking about autistic and neurodivergent brains, often because things are looked at through a medical lens, we have a pathological medical model. For autism specifically, we have what is known as the triad of impairments. I'm gonna dive in and give my thoughts on this triad of impairments model of autism. If you want to know how I feel about this, although you may be able to guess some of my thoughts, please do stay tuned. Welcome back. Talking about the triad of impairments this week, the triad of impairments is social impairment, language and communication impairments, rigidity of thought and behavior. Those are the three triad of impairments that they are saying that autistic people have. I would like to counter and add that this is very limiting because it misses two major impairments that I feel contribute to all of the first three sensory processing differences because that can be an impairment on social language and communication as well as motor control because that has a big impact on our language and communication as well. So that's just something I feel they should add or should be in place in this triad of impairments, I feel like the neurotypicals are just really missing things without looking at where these communication differences are originating. So according to the heavily medicalized, one-sided, only listing out the deficits, negatives model of autism, we have this triad of impairments. We have air quotes, social impairments as autistic people. We have language and communication differences, and oh, I'm sorry, I would call them a difference. They call them impairments. We also have, air quotes, rigidity of thought and behavior. That is the triad of impairments for autistic people. I feel this triad of impairments is lacking because it doesn't list some of the very important things that contribute to some of these difficulties that autistic people can struggle with. For example, there is no mention of sensory processing differences, which in my personal experience as someone who has sensory processing differences, those have a major impact on my ability to communicate. If incoming communication is jargled or I am having sensory overload, I am not able to communicate. So that's a big thing. The other thing that is not listed anywhere in this triad of impairments for autistic people is motor control differences. With apraxia of speech being something that can have a major impact for those autistic people who experience it, or even myself having selective mutism and selectively losing my ability to communicate with my mouth is a major impact on my communication. The muscle control piece is so exceptionally important. And the other third thing that I feel this triad of impairment misses out on is executive functioning differences. A lot of my rigid, rigid, rigidity, 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 I cannot say it, rigidity, <laughs> why can't I say it now? That word that's not gonna come out of my mouth 
I can't even, I'm trying to say it. My brain just broke. The, the reason I struggle to transition and when someone changes up my schedule, rigidity, rigid, rigidity, that was harder than it should have been. The reason I struggle with this a lot of the times has to do with executive functioning. And we aren't even talking about that here in this piece. So the neurotypical model is, is really lacking in my opinion. Looking back at this impairment model, let's look at this first air quotes impairment, social impairment, which I would say are social differences, air quotes, may not have interest in peers and display little interest in other people and may isolate themselves. True. May not grasp social rules. Yeah, okay, true. Difficulty understanding emotions and feelings of other people. May find social situations stressful. Why is all of that bad? For example, I often am very content when I am isolating myself. Me isolating myself is often more distressing to other people than it is to me because when I have air quotes isolated myself, I'm often at home working on a hobby or passion that brings me a lot of joy. The one that says that I find social situations stressful has a lot to do with the fact that everyone around me has all of these unspoken expectations that I may not pick up on. I may not air quotes grasp the social rules, but if I socialize with other neurodivergent people, other autistic people, and people who are just a lot more compassionate about making expectations explicitly clear, people who are very upfront and blunt and honest, I actually find those social situations to be much less stressful. A lot of my struggles in social situations come from expectations for me to be and perform and behave in a neurotypical way. When I remove those expectations from myself, I feel as if it's less of a problem, but I need people to be compassionate with me. Impairment number two, language and communication. I did mention that sensory processing and motor control have a big impact on this. We don't see enough discussion on how that impacts language from medical professionals, in my opinion, as an autistic person. When we see them talking about the language and communication air quotes deficit, we see things such as taking language literally, which for me, because I'm a visual thinker, the words you say to me, draw me a picture. If you say things that draw a literal picture of something, that is how I'm going to interpret it. Therefore, I interpret things very literal because of my visual way in thinking. I feel as if asking you to just say what you mean is a very fair and reasonable accommodation for this. And I don't understand why you just not saying what you mean is a problem. Also, difficulties with facial expressions and reading unspoken communication cues. It just never occurred to me to look for information in people's facial expression and body language until I was diagnosed autistic when I was 29 years old. I just assumed I could take people for what they said and their words would tell me what I needed to know. Apparently, as an adult, I found out that this is not the case. Seriously, can't you just say what you mean and not expect me to read what's not being said? Can we make things a bit more explicit, please? Autistic communicators run the gamut from being hyper communicative, speaking a lot with our mouths. We may speak not at all with our mouths. We may have limited mouth communication. Many of us may type, write, or use other alternative devices to communicate if we have those muscle control issues or selective mutism or anything that means speaking with our mouths may be unreliable or not the best way for us to communicate. Even me, who blah, 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 these videos every week, 
I find that I actually communicate most effectively typing and in writing versus with spoken communication. And that is my communication need, whether it is an outgoing or especially an incoming communication because I have auditory processing differences, a sensory issue that has a major impact on my ability to process incoming communication. Being autistic means we are more likely to be neurodivergent in more than one way. I am autistic and ADHD and hyperlexic, for example, which impacts how I process communication. Autistic people may be dyslexic. They may have dyscalculia. Those are other processing differences that impact how someone is processing communication, as well as audio processing differences. Yay, those kind of suck. I'm just going to be honest, the audio processing, I can't hear anything anyone says word for word ever. Okay, now let's talk about that last bullet point, the rigidity in autistic people, defined as when we have an air quotes inability to cope with new demands or new information, changes in schedule. That looks like me having a meltdown getting really upset when somebody says, surprise, we're going to do something else, not what I told you we were going to do earlier, or surprise, we've got a meeting in 10 minutes, we've got to prepare to, or, oh, well, this is the new idea we're going with. Here, here's the new idea you've got to adjust to, and me freaking out and having a meltdown. Here is the secret. I can adjust to new information. I can adjust to a schedule change. Just not right then and there in that moment. I need a little bit more time than most people to adjust to a new plan or new information. But I can adjust. What I feel is rigid is a non-autistic person needing me to be able to instantly put the brakes on, come to a screeching halt, and change directions. Just give me some time. I know you might be able to change directions like that, but I can't. One way isn't worse than the other. These impairment models of autism and autistic people is really if you take the opposite of any of these traits, you could pathologize a non-autistic person in the same way, saying that they require too much change and spontaneity to be content, and they get bored easily with routine. You could say that they are overly dependent on socializing with other people, etc., etc. You can pathologize anybody if you try hard enough. And with autistic people, we've been pathologized for far too long. Thank you for hanging out with me this week. If you are still here, you sat through the entire video, hit that thumbs up so that I know I didn't lose you along the way. I know I can ramble and go in all kinds of directions, but I'm trying really hard with my notes to keep myself on track and to the point. Hitting that thumbs up lets me know if I did meet those expectations and I didn't lose you. Thank you to everyone who sticks around, who reacts to the videos, who adds your feedback and your comments and your video suggestions and questions. This blog wouldn't be what it is without all of you, the readers and viewers. I'm really grateful for each and every one of you. Of course, also grateful for the Patreon subscribers, Facebook supporters, YouTube channel members, and now the Twitter super followers who do that little monetary subscription to help me pay for things like transcriptioning software, website hosting, and the technology with which this blog and uh, videos are created on. Every few years, you've got to upgrade technology, much to my dismay, because I don't like changing my technology. But without you, I wouldn't have the option of upgrading and changing the technology. So literally this blog wouldn't exist without you. Thank you, every single one of you. I will see you all next week. Bye.